some students in today's class requested to uh, to make a video about this uh, question one of tutorial five on double integrals. So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to explain this question uh, in four little videos. In the first one, I'm going to convert these integrals over rectangular regions to iterated integrals. All right, so here is the whole question. So let me do it one by one. Uh, first part, part A. Um, so here, notice that the, the function that we are integrating uh, is really a product of two functions. One just depends on x, and the second just, just depends on y. Well, the second one is, is just one. So, But um, whenever your integrand is a product of um, a function of x and a function of y, and the region of integration is rectangular, you, you can uh, it doesn't matter in which order you are integrating, because in either case, you will get the product of integrals, right? So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 uh, by x. Then the integral from 2 to 3, 2 to 3 by y. The function that we are integrating is x times 1 minus x squared dy dx. But then notice that the integrand does not depend on y. So you can move it here. So which means that this is really the integral from 0 to 1, x square root of 1 minus x squared, dx times the integral from 2 to 3, 1, dy. Well, and this part is really 3 minus 2 times 1, which is just 1. So this is really the integral from 0 to 1, x times square root of 1 minus x squared, dx. Okay? So I have converted a double integral over a rectangular region to an iterated integral first and then to a single integral. Now let me do the second part in the same fashion. Uh, in the second, uh, in part B, um, notice that the function is completely symmetric in x and y. So the if you switch x and y, you, you will get the same expression. And the limits of integration for x and y are also the same. So which means that this is really just the integral from 0 to 1 in x, from 0 to 1 in, in y, and then x, y over square root of 1 plus x square plus y square. And it doesn't really matter in which order you um, you are doing it because it's just symmetric. So dx dy or dy dx doesn't matter. So if you switch them, it, it, it's going to be the, the same thing. And the process of calculation is going to be the same. So neither of them is harder than the other one. OK, and uh, the last integral. So let me uh, write it, write the integrand first. x times cosine of x, y times cosine square of pi, x. Now. Which of the two variables would you rather integrate it with respect to? Is it easier to integrate with respect to x, or is it easier to integrate it with respect to y? And of course, it is easier to integrate with respect to y because y only appears one once here, and but x, you know, there is cosine of x something, cosine square of x something, and then times x. I mean, it's, it's just nightmare. So it is easier to integrate it with respect to y, right? And the limits of integration with respect to y are from zero to pi. And then from 0 to 1 dx, right? So when you convert this to an iterated integral, you do it so that later on you will integrate with respect to y first. And then after completing integration with respect to y, you integrate with respect to x. 